at the Advocacy Forum. I am visiting with Adrian Percy. And first of all, tell me what you do for uh, Bayer, sir. Well, I have a great job. I'm the Head of Research and Development for the Crop Science Division of Bayer, which means we're bringing some great innovation to the marketplace for growers across the world. At this conference, we've got a real mix of uh, people from different uh, areas of, of media to even farmer advocates who are very active at telling their own stories. Um, what kind of message do you have in terms of what Bayer's doing in the R&D world for meeting the challenges we have to feed the future, as the theme says? I mean, we see innovation as absolutely essential to driving agriculture forward and meeting this grand challenge that we have of producing enough food for you know, 10 billion people in 2050. And Bayer is one of those organizations that's actually contributing to that whole effort. And it's so important that we can share our technology with all types of stakeholders. So it's really important that everyone from consumers, from the media, from NGOs, other organizations that we work with really understand what we're trying to achieve and that we are producing safe products that are really going to benefit agriculture but also help the environment and, and help us move forward in a sustainable fashion. Well, I've had the pleasure to be able to visit uh, Bayer at, at headquarters, see some of the work yep. that you're doing there, yep. uh, and certainly here in the United States. Um, there are similar challenges around the world, but what do you think right now when it comes to R&D, what, what are your challenges in order to to get good R&D uh, done like you would like to yeah. see it? Well, in fact, I mean, I think one of the biggest challenges is technology acceptance. I mean, we've got 5,000 researchers and scientists working on new inventions for agriculture, but if we can't get them accepted by consumers, then it's, all that work is really for nothing. So I think yeah. these types of forums where we're working to be very transparent and open and have great discussions about what technology brings and what benefits consumers will see from it is really important. So we are advocating here. Yeah, what does that mean to you? Because uh, I follow you on social media and I know you have embraced that. What has that meant to you personally and professionally? Actually, it's very personal because I need to get up in the morning and be convinced that what I'm doing is, is right, is making a difference in some shape or form. Mm -hmm. And that what I do is, is transparent and open with, with public and consumers. And so being out there, um, being a bit vulnerable sometimes, but being out there is really, really important. It actually gives me a lot of motivation to do, to do all of these types of things. And I think also for my team as well, they're also of the same opinion that they want to be seen out there. They want to engage mm -hmm. in conversations with, with consumers, with regulators, with all manners of different groups uh, to be heard and to have people understand what we're really trying to achieve. Well, you say the word, that word vulnerability. I think that's something that for a lot of farmers or, and professionals that are in agribusiness, they feel a little uh, vulnerable to put their own thoughts out there because, let's face it, we're in a world where it's so easy to to uh, have an inter interaction on that. Not always pleasant. Sometimes it is, but uh, I've always kind of looked at it that at least you know if somebody's listening, watching, reading, following, you may not d agree, but they're still taking something away from it. Sometimes I do from them as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, totally agree. I mean, it is a bit scary being out there sometimes on social media. I get attacked. Um, mm -hmm. But actually, I learn from those because yeah. sometimes, you know, there are points of view that we really need to take on board. And if we can't do that, we're not going to be successful. So I think really mm -hmm. getting all of the different points of view, trying to understand them, trying to explain what we do where it's possible is really, really important. Anything you can say about the current... Um we call it the pipeline or what anything you might want to uh, tell us about uh, what we can expect from Bayer here uh, in light of a lot of the changes we're seeing in the industry and in the markets yeah. for that example so, so we're working in a number of different areas we work on you know new chemistry uh, we know there's a lot of issues farmers are facing right now that they don't always have the appropriate chemistry for instance for weed control we're working on new uh, soybean new cotton new canola traits 
uh, we're also working on new biologicals, which we think offer mm -hmm. farmers a different type of product and perhaps some flexibility to do some things that they can't do with chemistry. So we're working on all of those areas, but what we're really trying to do as well is really having an eye on the future and trying to see what would be acceptable from a regulatory point of view, from a consumer point of view, so the products that we're working on now, which will probably only hit the market in a decade, yeah. will really still meet the needs of society and of growers moving forward. Going back to Feed the Future, which is our theme here, uh, it's a big challenge we're talking about with the uh, population expectations and what have you. Uh, how do you feel in terms of confident uh, that we are going to be able to, to do that as we move forward? Well, I really feel confident in the power of science. I mean, we are in a golden age of science and technology right now. Mm -hmm. There are amazing things happening in all kinds of different areas. Things like uh, artificial intelligence, great technology around safe self-driving tractors and so on and so forth. There are many, many examples I can give you. So I believe we have the science. Mm -hmm. What we have to do, though, is explain that science to consumers to get acceptance. Otherwise, all of this work we're doing will really be for nothing. So I think that's really the key for me. Yeah, I, when you had your comments yesterday and, and we're mentioning uh, some of the new technology company, which company, which includes uh, uh, whether, let's face it, it, could be robotic, it could be, all, any, you know, a lot of these things. There's a lot of things going on. Not, they're not all ready just tomorrow to, to throw out in the field. These things that are, are being looked at, tested in significant uh, ways and levels before they're really going to make it out into the marketplace. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, a lot of the building blocks are ready now. It's a, often a case of putting things together, packaging them up, making sure that technologies work with each other, and then making sure that we've actually got a product that really makes a difference mm -hmm. on the farm. And so, of course, we, we don't want to bring anything to the farm that we're not confident we can put our name behind. Before we close here, um, you know, uh, you had a session, there were some, some questions and answers, and I know you've had a chance to interact with some of these folks. Uh, what question are you getting asked the most, or what's kind of standing out that they seem to want to know the most from, from what you do in the company? Well, of course, the, the, the age-old question is, what are you going to bring to the market next? What's in your pipeline? Have you got new stuff coming through? And it's been great to be able to show to some of the growers here some of the really exciting technologies we've got coming through the pipe. The other one, though, is about social acceptance. It's about regulations. Are you going to be able to get these products to the market and be able to, to sell them? And so that's, that's one of the big discussion points here. Well, we're going to stay very much in close. We really appreciate the support we have uh, ourselves, our little company from uh, Bear Crop Science. And thank you, Adrian, for visiting with me here. We're in San Antonio at the Advocacy Forum. I'm Chuck Zimmerman reporting.